and in 1967, they split up. Blake hoped therapy would help him come to terms with his failed marriage. One day on the way to his psychiatrist's office, he ran into 32-year-old Julie Andrews, the Academy Award-winning star of Mary Poppins and The Sound of Music. I said, are you going where I think you're going? She says, where do you think I'm going? I said, I suspect you're going to your analyst. And she said, you're right, and I suspect you're coming from yours. And that was our meeting. Andrews had recently separated from her husband, set designer Tony Walton, and was living with her daughter, Emma. Blake wanted to see Julie again and set up an informal meeting with the actress to discuss a new script he was working on. I was a huge fan of his anyway, and by the end of the evening, I think it's safe to say that we both felt we'd like to stay together a lot longer than just the evening. It was like, gosh, I wish I could ask him to dinner. I hope I get to see him again. On September 20th, 1967, Blake and his wife divorced after 14 years of marriage. Patricia moved to England with Jennifer and Jeffrey, and Blake's contact with his children was limited to holiday visits. Every time I went to get on that plane to go back to England, I love you, love you, and then, you know, he would turn around and weep. Blake desperately missed his family and threw himself into work. His recent films, including The Great Race, Gun, and The Party, had been box office disappointments. Edwards needed a hit. So did his new girlfriend, Julie Andrews. Over the years, the actress had tried to shed her wholesome Mary Poppins image. Blake knew she had more to offer, and in 1968, he cast her in his spy romance, Darling Lily. Julie's character was a German agent who poses as a London entertainer during World War I. The film co-starred Rock Hudson, and once again, the score and lyrics were created by Henry Mancini and Johnny Mercer. But Blake and Paramount executives clashed over the amount of music that would be used in the production. Blake never really wanted that movie to be as much of a musical as, um, as it became. Um, but Julie Andrews was, of course, most known for singing. Paramount had also insisted that Edward shoot Darling Lily on location in Europe, in spite of his concerns about the unreliable weather. Storms in Ireland caused shooting delays. Blake was infuriated when the studio blamed him for the resulting cost overruns. Edwards added even more fuel to the fire when he threatened the head of Paramount Studios, who had vehemently criticized Blake's handling of the picture. Well, I had challenged <laughs> Bob Evans to step outside. I said, you have done everything possible that you can do to embarrass me and to insult me, and you leave me no alternative but to act like for a caveman. It's just, if you're gonna hire me, then you hire me, not you telling me what to do. Throughout the difficult production, Blake and Julie had become even closer, and after a two-year courtship, the couple wed in a private ceremony on November 12, 1969. But they went into the marriage with caution. When Julie and I got married, we both agreed on two things. We would not set any goals. We would just literally take it a day at a time. And that we would work together whenever possible. Just as Blake had finally begun to realize his lifelong dream of a happy home life, Darling Lily was released on June 24, 1970, to lukewarm reviews and lackluster ticket sales. The innovative filmmaker was now rumored to be bad news in Hollywood. It was a label that was about to stick to him like glue. In 1971, Blake Edwards wrote and directed a Western drama for MGM in a departure from the comedic fare that he was best known for. Wild Rovers starred Ryan O'Neill and William Holden as two cowboys who become bank robbers only to be hunted down and killed. After screening the Western, the studio wanted to shorten the film and change the ending. Edwards did not have the right to a final cut, and though he disagreed with MGM's notes, he trusted them to finish the picture. It was a decision he later regretted. When the recut version of Wild Rovers opened, it bombed. While shooting his next MGM movie, The Carey Treatment, 
Blake was outraged to discover that the murder mystery was being edited without him. After completing principal photography, he left the project and tried unsuccessfully to have his name removed from the credits. Blake was becoming disillusioned with Hollywood filmmaking. I said, I don't want to have to go through this anymore. I want some peace and some quiet. And what I'll do is resort to what I am essentially, which is not a director, but a writer first. 50-year-old Edwards was ready for a change of scenery, and in 1972, he and Julie moved to London. There, he wrote and directed the espionage tale, The Tamarind Seed, which starred Andrews and Omar Sharif. But once again, poor reviews kept audiences away. Blake began to sink into a deep depression. There came a time when I said, why don't we just regroup and settle in Switzerland? And uh, I think we both knew it was the right time and the right thing to do. In 1973, the Edwards family moved to Stad, Switzerland, where Blake's son and daughter often visited. There, in an effort to lift his spirits, Edwards concentrated on writing, even while at the dinner table. He just had this blank expression on his face, and I knew that he was, you know, the gears were working on something. I just leave him alone and let him eat, and then kind of disappear back into his bedroom and, and write some more. Blake wrote about midlife crisis and his difficulties in Hollywood, putting a darkly humorous spin on his most painful moments. I think he uses humor to cope. I think it really helps put things back into perspective and um, helps you keep going. By now, Blake and Julie were four years into their marriage and both longed to have children together. We were hoping to get pregnant while I was working with Blake in London. We were trying and trying for X number of years and not getting lucky for some reason. At the time, the Vietnam War was coming to an end. Blake and Julie were part of a voluntary group that arranged for wounded Vietnamese children to travel to the United States for surgery. We fell in love with the Vietnamese kids. They had such courage, and they were so bright and happy. And, and then some of our friends began to adopt. Blake and Julie decided to adopt two girls from Vietnam who they named Amelia and Joanna. At the age of 53, Blake was now the father of a pair of toddlers. I did see a lot of people around me have younger fathers, but he offered me the same, you know, as any father would. I think having a dad who has kind of settled down and is really involved with his family um, was very beneficial. He's this odd mixture of a very tough dad as they grew older and an absolutely soppy pussycat. I mean, you know, <laughs> he's either one thing or the other. 